You've seen him, huh? If you've been on the talk, you've seen him. You've seen him crawling around, haven't you? It's worth getting claimed if I do. Hey people. Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 206. 206? <laughs> Pick up sticks for 206. Mm. Don't touch each other, please. Mm, you smell that? Don't touch each other, please. Shut up, Dana. Here's today's card. It's just around here to show you the card, but it's not trying to show you what's on the card. But you find out anyway, we've got to talk about it. <laughs> shut up, Mike. A little fucking rat. You shut up too, McGregs. You know who's a fucking rat is Khabib Nurmagomedov. <laughs> He's getting fucking raided, dude, for being a terrorist. He's a terrorist. Did you hear? Khabib Nurmagomedov is a terrorist. Look at the headlines. Look. Look at this. Hold on. Before we watch this. Russian security forces are raiding Khabib Nurmagomedov Martial Arts School in Makhachlacha in connection with the recent terrorist attacks. Okay? Look at it. They've got him surrounded, dude. They're fucking swatting it up. It's SWAT City up in this bitch. There's Zs all over the trucks. They're going to shoot it down. Khabib's going to Brown Town tonight, baby. And to top it all off, Conor McGregor predicted it. Do you remember? Of course you do. Nurmagomedov's manager, Ali Abdelaziz, is a explicitive, explicitive, snitch, terrorist rat. A little fucking rat. That's what he says. Said McGregor, the Irishman went on to claim that Abdelaziz had been pulled off of a fight from Cairo to New York on September 11th, 2001. September 11th, 2001? You telling me he was involved with 9-11? Are you kidding? He was pulled off of a flight and was caught with five passports in his possession. Are you kidding me? I didn't even know about this. I'm just learning about this right now. Abdelaziz turned informant and turned on the people he was working with, McGregor said, adding, I don't even know what that man is in this country. Oh, I don't even know why that man is in this country. Huh. So McGreg knew all along he was a terror. A little fucking rat. A little fucking rat. A little fucking rat. Isn't that fucking crazy, dude? What's going to happen now? And if you look right here, Russian tax authorities have seized all bank accounts of Khabib Nurmagomedov due to his debt of over $3 million. Look at him smiling. I'm a little terrorist. Yes, I am. I'm a little terrorist. No, uh, Khabib's not a terrorist. How could Khabib be a terrorist? It's not Khabib. Khabib's not a terrorist. Show probable spam. It's not Khabib. It's his fucking manager, Ali Abdelaziz. I, do you, I actually remember during that press conference him going on about that. And everyone thought he was crazy. We all thought he was on his, on his fucking Fruit Loops. I want to oil you up. What the, what the fuck does that Dana mean? Dana wants to oil you up. Dana's coming to oil you up. Dana comes to oil up. Shut your fucking mouth, you do not. You shut your fucking mouth. That's what, that's what he's saying to Khabib right now. Shut your fucking mouth, you'll do nothing. You'll do fucking nothing. Not one of you will do nothing. 
Get the fuck out of here! Get the fuck out of here! Anyway. <sighs> great way to start the day. It's a great way to start the day. Can we jump into Grok? I'm gonna see what this Grok is again. Remember we tried Grok? Oh, you gotta subscribe. Only premium members can use Grok. Why is it called Grok anyway? Why don't we ask ChatGPT why Grok is called Grok? Why is it, hold on, why is there two chat, why is there like chatgpt.com and then there's openai.com, but they're both ChatGPT? What's the difference? What's the difference? Hello, chat GPT. How are things? Hello, things are going well. Thank you. How about you? Is there anything specific you'd like me to ask? Yes. Whatever. Yes. Great. What do you need help with? Why is Twitter's AI called Grok? Elon Musk, the owner of Twitter, announced that Twitter's AI is named Grok. This name is a reference to the 1961 science fictional novel Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein. In the novel, Grok is a Martian. It's a, oh, is a Martian word that means to understand something deeply and intuitively. Uh, the term has since been adopted in technology and hacker culture to imply a deep understanding of a system or technology. Mm, uh, grok. I thought it was going to say it was the name of an alien. A Marshall Mathers. Marshall Mathers, Marshall Mathers. Speaking of Marshall Mathers, he's been making some music lately. Huh? You know, not only did he make, uh, not only did he make, uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? What is it? Boom, doom, 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 doom. <sighs> what is that song called? Eminem, newest song. What the fuck is it called? Houdin Dean. But he made another song, I feel like, didn't he? Toby? Can't play it though. I'll get absolutely fucking claimed instantly if I do. Right, Try to right. keep this like a, a fist from your face. Joe? You better shut your mouth, Joe. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> yep. I sure did. I sure did. <clears throat> I'm gonna puke. No, I'm not. I ain't gonna puke. What am I? I'm Diablazizi. What the fuck's his name? Ali. Abdelaziz. It's hard to make fun of someone when you can't remember their name, nor can you pronounce it. Ali Abdelaziz. Pulled off a flight from Cairo to New York on September 11th, 2001. He was pulled from a flight and he had five passports. Is that real? Should we ask ChatGPT that? That would be something to ask, wouldn't it? Chat GPT, get back up on the screen, would you? Was Ali Abdel... How do you spell that shit? Abdel Aziz. Oh, I just closed it. Uh, what's the term? Fuck. How do I bring up... Uh, sakes how to bring how to reopen tabs reopen closed tabs on opera control shift t hmm there it is <laughs> not night what does it say pulled off of a flight was ali abdelaziz pulled off of a flight on September 11th, 2001. Uh, ooh. 
Abdullah, Ali Abdulaziz, a well-known MMA manager, was indeed pulled off of a flight on September 11, 2001. He was traveling from Cairo to New York and was found to be carrying five passports. Subsequently, he became an informant for U.S. law enforcement agencies. In this background, oh, this background has often been brought up in the MMA community, notably during press conferences involving fighters he manages, such as Khabib Nurmagomedov. Wow! So, according to ChatGPT, who has, uh, they, it even has fucking uh, uh, sources for its statement. Isn't that nice? So it's true. So he is a terrorist. What the heck? I swear to God, if this video gets taken down because I said the word terrorist, I will shit bricks and make a house out of them. Out of shit bricks. It's fucking unreal, dude. Why the fuck can't we say words anymore? I like words. I like the word terrorist, and I want to say it. And, and you're not going to make me not say it. I don't give a fuck. Who do you think I am? Ali Abdulaziz? I'm not a goddamn terrorist, but I can talk about it. Hum de la lum. Hum de la lum. <clears throat> Oh, sometimes you just feel like saying the N-word, but then you realize you're on the internet and you can't. And I know what you're thinking if you're a liberal cuck right now. You're like, hey, you can't say that ever. All right, but guess what? I don't give a fuck. I'll say it whenever I want. I'll say it right now. Nee. 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 <laughs> I could have believed that. I could have bleeped it and you wouldn't have even known. Hallelujah. Should we jump into the top three winners of the week? Top three podcasts of the week? <laughs> Should we? <laughs> Should we? Oh, did I close fucking Adobe Photoshop? What the fuck happened to Photoshop? I had everything ready to go and it all closed on me. What the fuck? What in the fuck? Seriously, why did it all close? I know what you're thinking right now. You're like, what didn't save? You're not saying what didn't save. Well, uh, I don't want to say. All right? Fuck you. How about that? Eat my fucking arsehole. Eat my arsehole. Okay, I'll tell you what didn't save. It was the it was my UFC predictions. It didn't save. So, luckily I have a picture and I have it memorized as to who I fucking voted for. So, once we get to that point where we're going to go through my predictions of who I predicted in the last couple episodes, uh, two episodes ago, we'll, uh, whatever, dude. Just shut the fuck up. Stop explaining yourself. All right, let's go through the third place winner of the week okay we're doing the top three podcasts of the week that's what we do around here in case you didn't know this is the fucking scale the tier list here all right i removed the honorable mention because uh it's too much dude we don't need three places and an honorable mention and a podcast rec all right so Third place winner, podcast of the week, goes to... I don't even remember, but let's see. Oh, yeah. Shane Gillis on the Tim Dillon Show. Now, this episode that I'm referring to was aired way back in the day. It's episode number 173. This was when Shane Gilly uh, just got fired from Snow from SNL, okay? So this, uh, the reason why this gets third place is because it's a good opportunity for y'all 
to have some perspective as to what was going on through Shane Gillis's mind directly after his firing at SNL. If you're a Shane Gillis fan like myself, by the way, I'm seeing him next week. Next fucking week, okay? There's gonna be an episode uploaded, and then the following episode after that, I will probably have some footage from the event. It's the Great Outdoor Comedy Festival. It's gonna be Shane Gillis and Andrew Shuganag, Andrew Schultz, I mean. And it's gonna be great. I don't know if they're gonna let you film, right? They don't want their stand-up sets filmed ever. But this is an outdoor event. How are they gonna control that? They can't do the bagged phone thing in an outdoor event, can they? I don't know, I'm curious to see what the enforcement is on not filming the sets. Maybe they just don't give a shit and they'll be like, film it all, but I can't see it. I can't see it, but anyway, Tim Dillon Show, episode 170, Shane Gillis. You would think that he would be upset, a little bit distraught, a little bit disgruntled, uh, immediately being fired, after immediately being fired at SNL, but he actually isn't. He's actually kind of okay with it and doesn't really give a shit, which is great. You get to see into the mind of the Gilly Meister, of the Gilly Goose. He's the Gilly Goose. It's not Dustin Poirier, it's Shane Gillis. Shane Gillis is the Gilly Goose. <laughs> um, and uh, I didn't prepare clips this time. I don't know why. I didn't prepare clips for the episode. But why don't we just, why don't I, why don't I just go ahead, fucking open her up, Fucking pick a random spot in the episode. Actually, here we go. Here's a clip right here. Could you go on there and do like a bit? Yeah. Is yeah. I think that I doubt that, it though. I, yeah. I, I fucking uh. <laughs> no. I. Uh, you know what I mean? Like a little, like yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. desk piece on quick update. Cameo where quick in and they out. They get to boo me and be like, boo. Something fun. Uh, yeah, that's the thing. I don't think it would be that fun. Yeah. I think it would be fun. Right. Personally. Yeah. But I think, because I walked past, uh, last week, I yeah. walked past the fucking... The line? People sleep outside on I Friday sick. night. I always look at those people, I go, what's wrong with you? So This I city's got them. so much to do. I walked past them that night, and, like, they all, you know, it's all these, like, weirdos with, like, a Saturday Night Live snow hat, like... In a sleeping bag, looking up from the street, and I walked by, and they were all like, <gasps> "No, they recognize yeah, you." Yeah, they all, of course, they really? all had fucking knitted SNL scarves and shit. It was a good, yeah. So crazy these are piece. sick people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are sick because I always look at a show like that, and with all due respect to everyone who works there, because there's there's one or two people on there that are funny. I always look at a show like that, and I go, "How does it have fans that are like the the fervor of the fandom?" I get watching it. I get being like, "Hey, this is on. It's sketch comedy." And I think sure. a lot of the fans of that show are casual fans of like this is yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. that's on Saturday yes. night. And, and listen, it's a history. It's an ah. Okay, that's enough. We don't need to fucking watch a three, four minute, for three to four, three minutes, forty six second clip. You get the point, okay? This was right after Shane was fired. Like literally the day after. The day after. Actually, I don't know if it was the day after, but it was pretty close. What's going on here, Drickus? What the fuck? Wait, Drickus and Israel are having a press conference already? What the heck? I gotta save that for later. Oh, and Tom Aspinall versus Sergei Palpovich. The full fight has been released on the UFC network. <laughs> also, Sean Strickland fought a Navy SEAL. I'm about to watch that later today. I can't wait. I almost said the N-word again. Jesus Christ. And I know what you're thinking. You're like, why do you say it so much? Why do you always say you're going to say it so much? I don't know, dude. I don't know. There's something possessing me. I'm possessed by a devil. I'm dreaming. At least I'm not possessed by... A bunch of nerds who like to 
fucking pretend they're in the Jedi warrior fucking Star Wars universe. What am I, lame as shit? This shit popped up on my fucking For You page just yesterday while I was taking a shit. And all I could think was, how fucking disgusting. I hate this shit. I think this is the dumbest shit on the planet. And everyone who is involved in this is obviously someone who would do this. But it's like, why? What the fuck are you doing? Do something else with your life. You're not children. Although there looks like there's a child here, which I haven't played the video yet, but let me just zoom in. I can't zoom in. This is disgusting, okay? It's stupid. I don't give a fuck if they're just having fun and they enjoy it. This is not what adults should be doing. Oh my God. I, you guys can't see this right now, but there are some mighty, mighty dark clouds in the sky. And it is fucking like thunder and lightning like a motherfucker outside. It's only 5.44 and it is like... Oh my god, it looks like the fucking, the end of the world right now. It's so dark outside, and I just heard a big thundy. I would love for a rainstorm to come over on these folks. Initiate Aaron! Oh, Approach. it's disgusting. What the fuck? Neil. Oh. At least dress the part, you know? Don't just wear fucking Fantastic. shorts. By the will of the forts, I name you. Jedi Apprentice. Wow. Rise and speak your name. Ew. Rilo Storm Chaser. <laughs> Rilo Storm Chaser! Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Woo! yay! I'm a fucking nerd. I'm a fucking fucking nerd. Huh? This is so lame. This is so stupid. I don't give a fuck if I'm making fun of these guys. I don't care if, look, there is a kid right there. Kid's fine, okay, the kid can be there. Actually, it's kind of weird that there is a kid there. Why is there a kid there surrounded by a bunch of fucking nerdy adults? <laughs> That's actually more creepy than the fucking video itself. Get that kid out of here. That kid should not be involved with these adults. That is a bad influence for that kid. If that kid wants to do this with his other children friends, then go for it, okay? Because this is absolutely something I would do as a kid if I was into Star Wars, which I wasn't, because I'm not a fucking nerd. I'm not a fucking nerd, dude. I don't like this shit. Fuck Star Wars. And fuck these adults. You know I'm joking, right? Okay? You know, you're joking, okay? Don't you know what a joke is? Can't the guy joke? But seriously, fuck these nerds. How do I join? Serious question, oracles. Ah! Oh my god. The power went out. Oh no. Everything's still recording? No. Oh shit. My camera's recording. Oh fuck. Uh oh. Shit. One eternity later. Oh, what a bunch of bullshit. What a bunch of bullshit. So that means I'm gonna have to use that audio. Ah. Oh. None of this shit recorded. I'm gonna have to fuck around again. Oh my god. And the internet's out.
And the fucking internet is out again. Ugh. What a fucking disaster. Come on, internet. Kick back in. Come on. <laughs> oh, what a disaster this is. Fuck, dude. Come on. Okay, internet's back. Apparently. Doesn't look like it, though. Oh, you hear that? You probably can't hear that, but... There's fucking thunder like a motherfucker. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run through this quick. Oh my god, it's fucking like storming outside. This fucking shit, come on dude, stop crackling in my ear. Test, 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 test. Test. Okay, can we jump back into this please? Okay, second place winner. Horror, oh my God, the fucking, it's storm, dude. Dude, it is crazy right now. <laughs> What a fucking episode this has been. Holy shit, I'm gonna have to do a bunch of whole bunch of fucking editing now in the first half. Uh, God damn it. Whatever, okay? Let's just move on. Is everything still recording properly? Yes, it is, okay. Ah, oh, this sucks, dude. All right. Second place winner, second place winner of the week, podcast of the week, goes to Harlan Williams on We Might Be Drunk with Mark Norman and Sam Morell. Why did I put them in second place? I don't know, dude. You tell me. Um, oh, I know why. Remember when Harland won on a couple episodes ago, first place or in the honorable mention? Well, I think it was both, but uh, as you know, Harlan Williams is always on. Also, by the way, I can't use my soundboard right now because in order for me to use my soundboard, it has to be plugged into an external USB thing. I'm using both my USB fucking drives right now for my mic and my hard drive because if the power goes out again uh, I need to be prepared and backed up so that's why I'm not going to use my stream deck for fuck sakes I should just refilm this whole fucking episode dude nah we're not doing that I'm sick of doing that. We're not doing that. <sighs> but then I, just, I pressed a button so many times. It didn't record anything. Didn't record anything. Oh, well. What are you going to do? Harlan Williams. He's always a fucking clown. On every episode. On every podcast ever. But in this, he's not. He's being serious. That's what I'm trying to say. Harlan Williams is being serious, dude. You never see him be serious, but, but he's the serious the whole fucking time. You get a full fucking history lesson of goddamn Harlan Williams. Let me show you a goddamn clip that I haven't prepared, but I'm gonna whip one up right now. Let me just open it up and just go yeah, to a random like spot and just fucking show you. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, <laughs> it's good to see you again. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, boy, the nineties. You had a, we had a real run. Of you were in a ton of movies, dude. Yeah, I, I can't complain, man. I, I, I got, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. See, he's serious. 
Do you believe me now? He basically gives you a full rundown of like uh, the movies he's been in, um, which is great because he's been in so many good ones, but he, he gives you a, a nice behind the scenes coverage of what it was like on those episodes or episodes. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Movies. He give, He tells you like, like the famous scenes that everyone has questions about all the time. He gives you a full rundown of what's going on. And he's done this on other podcasts, but he really goes into a depth in, on this one. And now, but on We Might Be Drunk, they always have a pet peeve segment where the guests and Normand and Morel talk about pet peeves that they have. But Harland was just going on about pet peeves he has with women and how he like doesn't like when they go to bed with wet hair and some other shit. There was something else he said. Oh, like when they wear like sweatpants to bed or something. And it was, it was, it was, it just, it was strange. You know, he was acting like he's some sort of fucking hunk who gets all kinds of women. And whenever he does that, I'm like, come on, Harland. I mean, I get it. You're famous. You can probably pull some bitches, but... You're not fucking, you're not, you're not fucking Brad Pitt, buddy. Just cool it with that shit, would you? Fucking cool it. It almost reminded me of that scene in 40 Year Old Virgin when, uh, <sighs> what's his name? The guy who plays Michael Scott, what the fuck's his name? You know what I'm talking about. The main character is like sitting around with the boys at the table and it gets to his turn and they're talking about women and he's like squeezing boobs is like two bags of sand. That's what it feels like when Harlan Williams talks about women and his fucking bitches that he pulls. I gotta reload all these clips that I saved because the power went out, which meant the internet went out, which meant all the clips have to be refreshed. Isn't that, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Okay, that storm is getting really wild. You definitely cannot hear it, but it's... It's barnacling. Oh, it's barnacling out there. So I don't really have many clips prepared, but what I do have is some updates on fucking the Beavmeister. We still don't really know if he's fibbing or not, but a lot of people are really speculating at this point that he's fucking full of shit and he's not really broke and he's just doing this for publicity stuff. Although he might, he probably is broke, but not as bad as he's claiming he is. And he's just doing this to like bring more awareness to him because he's fallen off hard, dude. He's fallen off. But here he was on like a live stream coming out to sell his TV. Uh, Fucking breaks it. No. But is he acting? He's probably acting. Bevo. No. No, Bevo. Bevo, no. You broke your TV that you were gonna sell, that you were just faking it. See, Fat Freddo says, great acting, Bevo. Great acting. And then he, he puts up this another video where he's got a Starbucks uniform on, the little apron, and he's like, hey, it's your boy. What's happening, TikTok? This and Bevo here. I just wanted to announce you probably. This and Bevo here. Already seen. Um, I finally got a job. I know you've all been wanting me to have a job and you're saying that I dish the nine till five. I never dish yours. I just wanted to join you. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, I'm going to be working in Starbucks in Starbucks. Central I think it's down uh, Carnaby Street. Um, I finally got the job. They want me to do a bit of promo as well for Starbucks and I might potentially be able to get Starbucks. back to Star yeah, Trek, being, Starbucks. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be working at Starbucks. But Good Sophia, for you, please, Viva. If you are watching this, I'm trying to Sophia. change myself. I'm trying to get my bread up for you. I just want you to come home. Sophia's from still not back, I'm Bevo. To get money to try and find you. I don't want this whole Jay Slater thing happening again. But listen, Sophia, please message me. 
I've even uh, packed my case. I'll show you now. Where are you going? Yeah, so just please, please come what back. What did he pack um, his suitcase yeah, for? What is that all about? Yeah, Carnaby Street, Starbucks, Bevo. I'm going to be having a job there. Make sure to come down and I'll make you the best coffee around. You know the rules. See you soon. Cheers. He's not there. How many people came to him expecting coffee and he wasn't there? Ringo says, I don't want this whole Jay Slater thing happening again. Are you messing, you lad? You are a prop. What does that mean? What's with British talking like a fucking weirdo? I said that wrong. What's with British people talking like fucking weirdos, dude? Fucking weird. Anyway, there's one more update. He's with some other chick talking about Sophia. What is he? What's his plan here? He's like, oh, Sophia, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get this way fucking hotter chick to sit down with me to see if I can make you jealous to come back. Is that what you're doing? You're gonna eat fucking chicken with this. Hot, and honestly, this chick's way hotter than Sophia. Just stick with this girl. You don't need Sophia. Dinner. Dinner. Business dinner. Dinner. Business dinner. I'm trying business. to find out. Yeah, here. it's business, all right. Information about Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sophia's friend. She's about to eat that she's hungry. Sorry. Um, Sophia's I'm friend. Right, uh, you're okay to pay for this once I start eating so I'm skinned. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that all right? Yeah, yeah we're sort, yeah, Stupid. Sweet. Right, That's... Um, right. That right there shows that he's full of shit. That was... That was act... If that's not acting, then I don't know what the fuck is. You're not just going to announce that you want the other person to pay right on camera like that. And, and now... It's all fake. It's fake. It's fake, dude. I'm oh, cheese. We've got a burger. Um, so that's all I can afford. If you're going to let me uh, eat one of your wings or something. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and watch him eat fucking food with this hot bitch. All right. Sophia's friend. ba da ba da da ba 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 Yada, yada, yada. We get it. All right. Oh, my God. The thunder literally sounds... It sounds like it's right outside my fucking window. I shit you not, I guarantee the power is going to fucking go out again. And if it does, I'm going to be pissed. But at least I'm prepared this time. Hallelujah. I'm going to, uh, this episode's going to be quicker. I'm going to jump through it quickly because I don't want the power to go out again. Okay, we're going to jump to first place. First place podcast of the week. It goes to... <laughs> Oh, I forgot about this. Protect Our Parks, dude. Protect Our Parks, episode 12. You don't know what Protect Our Parks is? <laughs> You're missing out, dude. You're fucking missing out. All right? It's, it's, it's the Joe Rogan experience, but it's like a, uh, it's a series. It's an ongoing running series. Every few months or so, Mark Norman, Shane Gillis, and Ari Shafir sit down with Joe Rogan, and they just get fucking hammed. And just fucking bullshit around. They fucking listen to Freebird and fucking do beer bongs out of a fucking freedom funnel. Which if you don't know what a freedom funnel is, I'm going to show you right now. Here is what a freedom funnel is. I plan on getting one eventually because they're fucking awesome. The freedom funnel. Look at this shit. It's a beer bong. Well, this one's got Trump on it. That's not the one I'm looking for. It's a fucking beer bong. You put the beer in here and you suck out here. Huh? The freedom funnel. All right? They're chugging into that the whole time. Dude, there's 12 episodes so far. And it's just a great time. Ari pisses in a bottle almost every single fucking time. Like every time he pisses in a bottle. and Or in a can. And everyone gets pissed off. As I would. Although surprisingly, Rogan doesn't get as mad as I thought he would. Because he's getting piss everywhere, all over the studio. He just pisses. And they, they do get mad, but I they don't get as mad. Now this episode 12, they didn't get as fucked up as they know. They honestly barely got fucked up. But pretty much every other episode, they get so fucking hammed. There's a couple episodes in particular where Ari literally passes out. Blackout fucking drunk. And apparently he stayed that way for the next like three to five hours. And when he woke up, Rogan was having like a pool tournament in the studio with a bunch of fucking professional pool players. 
I don't know. You hear about it in this episode. But if you if you're looking for like a good podcast series to watch, just like I recommended last week about the presidents, protect our parks, dude. Protect our fucking parks, baby. Now, why is it called protect our parks? Well, in episode like one or two, Ari was wearing a shirt that said protect our parks. Uh, basically, it was like a, a fucking petition to protect one of the parks in New York. And the guys just made fun of it. And eventually that's just what they called. There goes thunder again. That's what they called this whole series. Protect our parks. So much better than the Sober October crew. So much better. You know, remember Sober October where uh, Ari Shafir, Bert Kreischer, and uh, what the fuck's his name? How am I forgetting his name? Tom Segura got together with Rogan and on JRE and they would do like uh, episodes of uh, Sober October challenges. All right. Those were good and they were all right to listen to, but they don't even come close to protect our parks. Not even close. So please, for the love of God, check out Protect Our Parks. That is our number one fucking winner podcast of the week. Number one, Protect Our Parks. And also, by the way, at the end of this episode, like with the last like 15 minutes, they are all talking about... Uh... How Joe Rogan, how the Joe Rogan experience got started. So it's a pretty cool little insight into it, in case you didn't know. All around, just a full, nice, big package. So here's our lineup. Take a look. Third place, it's Shane Gillis on Tim Dillon. Uh, Har second place, Harlan Williams on We Might Be Drunk. First place, Protect Our Parks. Protect Our Parks in general. La, 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 la. La 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 Right? Okay. <sighs> what clips do I have left? Okay. So, yeah, okay. We're just gonna jump right into UFC stuff. Um... Yeah, UFC 303 happened. It was actually a really nice card. All right, but there's a lot of fucking fuck arounds. Okay, Dan Ige stepped in last minute to fucking uh, replace fucking Ortega. Like literally four hours, not even like a few, it was probably about four hours before he was supposed to fight. During the fucking card, we find out Dan Ige is stepping in to replace Ortega. Like what? After all the shit that was supposed to happen, McGregor was supposed to fight, fucking uh, 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 Anthony Smith was supposed to fight whoever, and in his fight got replaced. Blah bidi boop bap, blah bidi bap bap. Okay? Diego had to fucking uh, cut weight twice in two different ways, and then he had to do it again after Dan Gige steps in, and he still fucking managed to get it done. And props to both Dan Ige and fucking Diego Lopez, because do that go through all that shit all right it's just fucking awesome um and by the way peyton talbot oh my god what a fucking beast dude what a fucking beast i knew he was pretty good and i've heard i've been hearing about him lately but damn to see him fucking just knock that guy out within like 13 14 seconds hell yeah hell fucking yeah and uh I just got to mention that John Silva guy, where is he? Do I, oh, I don't even have it open. Actually, I do have it open. Where the fuck is it? Uh, let me just, let me just pull a picture of this guy. All right. This weird ass motherfucker. Okay. Can I just say, okay, I understand he, he's, he's super excited to be in the UFC. I get it. Okay. He's very grateful, yada, yada, yada. But I don't like him. He's a good fighter, yeah, but he's maybe he'll grow on me, but he's weirding me the fuck out. He was hugging Bruce Buffer. He was crying at every moment. 
post and pre-interview during the fight he kept high-fiving fucking the dude he was fighting which i can't even remember who it was that canadian dude he knocked him down he told him to get like it was just so fucking weird and then rogan came in and the translator at the end and he's hugging them both and it's like oh just chill the fuck out dude he's so weird and then he's got those nerd glasses on because his whole fucking crew is called, I don't know, something about nerds. He's very, very, very strange. I don't know. He might grow on me. It seemed like everyone was okay with him, but for me, I thought he was just fucking weird as shit. Anyway. Obviously, it sucks that Yuri lost. We all knew Alex was going to win. Um, well, I mean, it was like pretty much guaranteed that Alex was going to win, but I, I don't know. I didn't know who to pick. It was hard, man. Cause you want, you want Yuri to win, but you want Alex to, they're both great guys, great fighters. I feel bad for Yuri. He had the belt. He had the belt and he, and he forfeited it, it himself because of an injury. He didn't have to do that, but he did it because he's that kind of guy. And then Alex came in and fucking took it. And ever since then, Yuri's been trying to get it back. But he just, he has a second shot at it from the guy who took it from him, who right after he forfeited it, and he just, he can't get it back. And unless Alex loses the belt to someone else and Yuri fights that person, Yuri's not getting it back. Yuri's not getting it back. And, uh, I just feel bad for Yuri. He was on top of the world and now he's not. Is Alex going to fight John Jones next? I don't know. I don't fucking know, but it would be fucking cool if he did, wouldn't it? It'd be really fucking cool if he did. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem like Dana wants to do that, but we never know what Dana wants, all right? He did say he wants to see... Um, shabadi ding dang ding dang ding ding dang, dibbidi ding dang ding dong, good day, yabada do 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 potato, yabada papa. Dana did say he wants to allow Alex to continue to fight in this division before he moves up to John Jones. Um, but we'll see. He'll probably fight like one or two more people and then Dana will be like, okay, you're going to fight Mr. Jones. Hey, Jude. Don't touch my pants. Hey, Jude. Why don't you touch my pants? Touch my panties. Go touch my pants. Won't you please... Just touch my pants. All right, let's quickly run through these winners. I picked Vinicus. I picked Ray. I picked Martin. I picked Jillian. I picked Peyton. I picked Jean Silva. I picked Cub. Actually, I can't even remember. I'm pretty sure I picked Cub. No, maybe. I don't see. Is that fucking... Actually... Ah, who gives it? Do we really need to go through this? I already did this. Basically, Ian won over Michael. I picked Mira. Uh, I picked Anthony, but Roman took it. Uh, I picked Diego. He won. I picked Alex, and he won, of course. All right. Okay. And one other thing. Alex was fucking helping this fucking random-ass stranger replace a tire on his way to UFC, or, I don't know, the days prior to it, and they made a whole video about it. Look at him, he's just on the road, doing his old job. Fixy, fixy, tire, tire, we don't have to watch the video. I just keep thinking about the, the amount of editing I'm have to gonna do in the first half of this, and the audio is gonna suck ass. Because this shit, the power went out, all that shit stopped recording, and didn't save. Didn't save. At least the video footage is there. That's all that really matters. Am I right? 
Anyway, that's it. We're not doing a fucking, we're not doing, we're not doing a world t-shirts update anymore. Fuck that. I'm done with that shit. Who gives a fuck? All right. That is it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell right fucking now. Out of you, fuck. Just do it, dude. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Bye.